everyone. My name is Josh Foreman. I am a sculptor. There we go. Sculptor. Eh, okay. Uh, author of books that you should buy on Amazon. Scarred King series. Available now. And illustrator. Uh, look, there's illustrations in there. Uh, quite a few of them. Um, yeah. I do all that stuff. I stream uh, YouTube. I Instagram. I do all that fun stuff. Please follow me there. Um, I think that's all I got to say about myself. Except here's what we're working on, which um, this has got to be quite a bizarre layout here for people to check out. Hi, Mike. How you doing? Okay, so what we have is this little character known as the foreman. And let me hold him where you can actually see him. And this is a 3D print that I made from the game asset that is in a game called Blanco's Block Party, which is what I work on during my day job. And this little character was kind of a caricature of myself because we wanted an avatar in the game who was your introduction to build mode. It's a game where you can build your own levels to play, um, play games with your friends in. And it made sense, since he's a construction builder type guy, to make him a foreman. And my last name happens to be Foreman. So it was like, why not just call him the foreman? And, uh, and it all clicked and, and some people, not me, some other people on the team said, we should make him actually look like Josh. Albeit in the Blanco's aesthetic, right? So that's what we're working on today. Oh, actually, I should show you this. Here's like an official in the game uh, image of him. So you can see the colors that we're going for. I've spent the past week at least sanding and priming all of these guys to get every little chip and ding out of them because making vinyl toy looking character uh, with these like pristine smooth surfaces is <laughs> very challenging very challenging so uh, here is here's where I'm at like this is silly putty and I'm using it to mask off the areas so that I can airbrush I have to airbrush because spray paint is too grainy and brushes will almost always leave brush strokes on pristine smooth surfaces like this. Um, and because the edges are so like clean, they have to have like, well, clean edges. There are several ways to mask off 3D objects for painting. Sadly, I still not having my uh, studio um, moved and organized fully I cannot find my liquid frisket or masking medium of any kind so I am using silly putty which works fine ish it has its challenges so So one of the challenges is that being a, you know, three-dimensional strip um, and then needing to make precise lines, I need to like smoosh it down to as, as thin a taper as possible so that I don't have either overlapping paint in areas or areas that just leave some of the white, the white surface exposed. Um, yeah, so last night I put down the um, blue skin color coat and I'm about to do the brown beard and this kind of dark blue jumpsuit. So I've got, 
Got to make sure all the skin is masked off. Oh, I forgot about underneath here. It is a nice light blue, isn't it? I specifically had to mix that up last night. I got a blue at the store that was pretty close, but it was a little too saturated for the skin. This one still might be a little on the saturated side, but I, I'm okay with that. thing about using silly putty for this process is that as you manhandle it uh, <laughs> to make sure it's all covering the right places you're you're often sticking your fingers on other places which then shifts it and blobs it around so I keep needing to go back and re-establish these lines which is not ideal Every time you do that, you're messing up the, um, the cleanliness, the nice kind of machine factory stamped look that vinyl toys have. being pooched up over it when I sprayed the blue down. And so when I spray the brown over this for the hair, that's going to be like a lighter spot, right? Which means I'm just going to have to do more layers of the brown. And doing layers with the airbrush is tricky because you can't build it up very fast or on such a flat, smooth surface because that causes, um, uh, ooh, what is that word? When droplets separate from each other rather than forming a nice smooth surface, they pool into little, little droplets. I'll call it dropletize because you can't stop me from calling it dropletizing. All right. tempted to see what happens if I well actually what I'll do is on hopefully a cleanup pass afterwards where I can go on with a itty bitty fine brush to clean up any of those odd little areas
You agree with dropletizing? Okay, good. Would Vaseline work? Um, possibly? One of the issues is that it has to go over other paint as well and needs to be removable. And the problem with Vaseline is you could wipe a lot of it off with mechanical action of just like, you know, rubbing. But I don't know that you'd ever really get it fully cleaned off. I, I tried Elmer's glue and that kind of works. I did a little test on this guy. Um, but you can see there are a few areas, oh, I don't know why I'm putting, there are a few areas where um, after, so I put it on the shoe, I sprayed this glue as a test, then I peeled the glue off. That was great. It works that underneath the glue was fine. Uh, but then uh, later I put the glue over this blue paint and when I pulled it off, it did pull up a few little sections of the paint. So Elmer's glue is not a perfect cheap alternative to liquid frisket, sadly. I'm thinking to myself as I do this is that if I'm gonna err on one side or the other I'd rather err on the side of having blue skin going onto the beard rather than brown beard going onto the blue skin because it's gonna be easier to go in with a little brush and touch up the edges of the brown beard with brown because that's gonna cover blue a lot easier than blue would cover brown.
chipped a little bit of blue off the beard there. I'm not sure exactly what kind of um, protective coat I'm going to put over this yet. I'm going to want to test a couple things, I think. Checking all these little roundabout pieces. Ready for some spray. Hooray. So let's travel over here, shall we? Even grab you guys, take you for a ride over to here. Eventually, I'm gonna have two cameras set up, and I'll just click a button. Ooh, that was loud! I'll just be able to click a button and uh, see you out there. How nice will that be? Super nice. That's the answer. to actually clean my airbrush last night before I quit. I get bonus points for that. Beards and jumpers. I'll put this over here. So the jumpers are their own unique color. Kind of this dark blueberry blue. So I think I'm going to mix uh, some of this indigo. Maybe a little. Mm, I think what I, I just need to see what the indigo looks like just laid down on there first and then if it needs additional work we can do additional work also why don't I pin this up um have somewhere little uh sticky sticks to pin it up but now I can't find them so we'll, we'll come back to that little idea very bright in here.
Oh, right. So I have this system set up so that the air gets sucked through there and then out a window that's behind it. But that window, I can't access it, so I hooked up this little lever to be able to pull the window open from there. And now I turn on the thing. This is going to get a little bit loud for a little bit. Wow. how close this indigo gets to the uh, jumpsuit color right out of the bottle. Dang, that looks pretty close to me. Oh, what do I think? It's dropatizing right out the bat. That's no good. little spatter so I'm going to give it a little higher pressure. So it was around 30, I kicked it up to about 40.
blender, if I just use a little bit of, um, just a little bit of brushy, brush strokes that I can't get over, but it allows me to get in all these little wrinkles that are, the airbrush is having a lot of trouble reaching.
Can I just uh, cut out and come back in? <laughs> I do not know what just happened. I put my drink down and it hit a button. Oh, it looked like it was the power PC button. Yeah, let me know if I'm like uh, still alive here. According to my OBS, I'm still streaming. Am I still streaming? was a good idea to put a power button, just a one-touch power button, right up there. Very weird. Lesson learned, uh, don't put your drink down on the other side of the keyboard. Okay, beard time. I do feel like this is the perfect brown. We're going to find out. Upside down. Let's find a darker brown to mix it with, shall we? Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, I swear I had another brown. An antelope brown, I think. What is this? Literally antelope brown. Okay, let's give this one a shot. I have a feeling it's going to be somewhere between these two. This looks like green. Uh, I guess it's like somewhere in the middle there. Oops, forgot to dump this. Okay. Also, why is it leaving chunks of paint residue in there? That's out here apparently. I don't know if it's the antelope brown that I just poured in there or what. It's suddenly there are little chunks of paint which eventually come out as chunks right onto your paint surface 
but not really stinks. Let me see if, um, I think those are just bubbles, not chunks. I think I need to do a mix of these two, which means I need something to actually mix them in. Turn off the whirlwind for a second. Uh, let's see, do I have a thing with a cap that I could mix in right now? That is the question. Normally do, but everything's in a disaster mess right now. Let's see. I guess nope, that's not a thing. I guess what I could do is take something like an alcohol bottle, put this into something else, and then I've got, uh, let's see, do I have a large thing to put this in? <laughs> it's terrible, everything's terrible. So for this, it doesn't need to be permanent. One sec. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to get a cup. I think this is a clean cup. Okay. Then, mix what I need. And then after the stream, I'll just run out and get a container with a lid. Okay, so this must be the uh, chunk culprit, the one that keeps putting chunks in my airbrush. It says water resistant, non-clogging pigment. Shake lightly before use. I'm going to shake vigorously instead. See, I would love to have a dozen calculators. I'm so bad at math. I always need more calculation in my life. Look 
looking for. Uh, I'm still okay. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna mix in here, then I'm just gonna strain because I have a straining cloth. Ha ha! You can't stop me, chunky paint. Paper towels. This. This. Right. Have another cup. Here it is. This is cup clean. Strainer. And I don't need to strain the um, antelope brown because it does not have chunks. It is not a knotty paint like this one is. But, well, okay, so maybe paper towels don't make the best strainers in the world. with it. I might want to throw some white in there too so I can get it because this is quite a bit darker. What? Chunk still got through? No! Okay. Give me one second because I specifically have filters set aside for resin. Let's see. 
certainly work for this paint. Try this method. Uh, these strainers are not nearly fine enough, but I can double them up. Try to crisscross them a little bit and pour it through multiple times until I feel like it's achieved what it needs to achieve. Um, Container. Oh my god! Why didn't I just get a thousand to start with? trying to debate now, do I just go, just wait till another stream to do this, find my stupid filters, which I have a million of somewhere, uh, and switch to a different color. Do Can I do a different color yet before I do brown? I don't know that I can. I kind of worked myself, painted myself into a corner. Give me one more moment. Sorry, everyone. filters because I got all these uh, filters for airbrushing and stuff so I guess I could just cut a little chill well or I could just pour it straight through it just means that little section of the um, filter is going to be clogged but that's probably better than having a hole in the filter let's see Let's find out the hard way if this will work or not, shall we?
that made no. Finally done. Yes, I have extracted the pure essence. The essence? Yes. Okay. Now that I have pure essence, um, totally different than evanescence. I still see a few tiny ones, but I don't think, you know, that the smaller they get, the less likely they are to, like, create a little spatter from the airbrush. Also, I guess there's nothing stopping me from running it through the filter again. Except that eventually you run out of paint doing that, but Airbrushing, am I right? Almost as infuriating as 3D printing. Shall we not? Got the mask off under there. Look at that. Okay. 
add that to the old failure compilation. Hey, Ginger. Looks like all the straining paid off. Getting a nice smooth flow from it.
bodies from myself. Oh man. This is kind of freaking me out. Oh, I put them down by the heater to dry. Okay. <laughs> you never want to hide your bodies so well that you can't find them yourself. That's what I learned from Dexter. First, how's it going? Welcome home from work. I hope you have a good rest of your day. Uh, by adding the green, you're desaturating for use as a shadow. Uh, no, so the the actual art that I'm trying to accomplish is this vinyl toy look, which is super flat color over everything. So I'm trying not to bake any shadows into it. Um, it's just, I'm just trying to match the tones. And one of the tones I managed to not match at all was, this is jumpsuit, but I think the, uh, the little collar and what it, zipper thing I think it's the perfect color for that. So if I just mask that off and then do a lighter blue uh, for the coverall, I think we'll be good for that. That's good and dry now. Catching some Pokemans. Excellent. I have a lot of friends who work on Pokemon games. Always bad to hear people are playing them. Okay, um, let's do this. Actually, my friend who did the voiceover for my novel, uh, my, my book trailer, also did a voiceover for the uh, um, Pokemon Snap, the one where it's like a, um, sounds like the, uh, uh, I can't think of the word now, what is the nature show where, um, uh oh, is this, is this pulling paint off? What's the old British dude who does the nature shows? I can't think of his name now. Anyway, he did a good impression of that guy for one of their commercials. Yeah, this does not want to stick. I'm not sure why. Why you no want to stick? Is this paint particularly slippery? Oh, I think it's getting paint on it because my fingers are uh, squashing the paint off of the um, surface of this silly putty, getting on my fingers and then getting on that. It's not that it's pulling the paint off, okay. Although, look at that, I am indeed rubbing it off. Shoot, maybe this needs more time to dry. Let's give it more time to dry. Mm -hmm. Let me see if I can touch that 
up without needing to um, need to re airbrush. Hey, Jamano. Goes good. Pretty good. I mean, we'll see. I'm a little stressed out about hitting my uh, my deadline for this video. But that's always the case the last week of the month. It's always my stress out time. Thanks, YouTube algorithm. Really appreciate constantly being stressed out about having to appease you. Just gonna see what happens if I leave these brush strokes in. See if if they're apparent after they dry. Ooh, I forgot to do the little arm uh, hole thingies. Oof. Let's try that with a brush too. Maybe I want to do like white over it and then light blue, but I'm going to see if how good the coverage is. It's all good, Gimano. What have you been up to? That is such a big droplet that if I rotate it, it's going to drip. Did I trap myself? I guess what I'll do is I'll just prop them up like this for now. Boop. Do a little handstand, a little break dancing move there. You're pregnant. Congrats, dude. Is this your first or no? Also, how girl get pregnant? How is baby formed? No, don't answer. guys chill like so number three completing the trilogy huh I did my two and uh, I'm I am very content with the amount of um, time, effort, energy, money, emotional distress, and everything else that kids bring with them. Okay, so these guys are setting up, and these guys are setting up, and I want to wait to do the big guy. Actually, let's check out the big guy real quick. I wonder what you do this guy until I've proven all the techniques on the smaller guys. Oof, I probably should not have set this down before the paint had 24 hours to set. Should I have? Nay, I should not have. Oh man. Uh, 
I am making a character from a video game that I'm working on. My day job, I am the uh, senior level designer on Blanco's Block Party, which is a free to play, build your own levels, play with your friends type of game with uh, sort of vinyl collectible uh, vinyl characters. And um, one of the characters in the game is this guy, the foreman. He's the NPC who's like in charge of build mode. And uh, several people at my company thought it would be funny to make him kind of resemble me in a sense, since my last name just happens to be Foreman and uh, we're both in charge of build mode, why not? Okay, yeah, so I think, I think this guy is still in good shape. I'm trying to decide if I want to do a pass or wait until I get the liquid frisket. I feel like, I feel like I'm going to hold off on this. Just in case I make some amazing discovery about a way better way to do it or the liquid frisket turns out way better because I still have that concern that, um, let's see, I want to keep the skin on the face. I still have the concern that when I, when all is said and done, the lines between parts of the sculpture are not going to be very clean. Look at that, I squished it to the side there. Yeah, so there's like a lot of reasons that liquid frisket is probably a better way to go. But one thing I can do is remove part of this I wonder if I should just tear it all off and reapply the face probably since it's gonna get all torn apart and stuff anyway turned out between the skin and the beard turned out pretty clean not mad about that there I'm not sure if it's be I'm not sure what would cause that maybe a little bit of something that was abrasive in the silly putty scraped it off or maybe it's just that this paint doesn't stick particularly awesomely to this primer I maybe this paint just doesn't stick well to anything But I guess that's fairly easy to fix just by like masking off all the stuff around it and reapplying there. Um, I can leave the can covered. But yeah, this line is just not groovy. Let's see how shaky that is. That is not the nice clean look uh, from the reference. And that's exactly what I was afraid of and uh, you know apparently my instincts were correct. So I'm trying to think of the best way to go. I mean 
I, I feel like I'm going to have to redo the face regardless. And I think liquid frisket is just what I've got to do. And hope that that works out for me. Let's see how the little one turned out, if that's any different. supposed to be brown beer going up to there. Well, lessons are being learned. And not surprising, I have a little a little touch of blue at the tip of the hair there. It's kind of hard to see, but uh, cause yeah, all the moving around of the silly putty just kind of made that happen. I'm not surprised. So here's a question. Can I hand paint this beard and see how it's going to turn out? I prefer hand painting to airbrushing in almost every situation. But it felt like that just wasn't an option for this character because of its like factory finish look. Because, I mean, that would explain why the paint is pooling up so much. I wonder if doing a light sanding would ameliorate this issue. Let me try it on my test piece here. too fine a point on it, but this one is definitely finer. Because the white obviously makes a great base for accepting color, especially this, because these are inks, which are semi-transparent. for the most part. Now being able to get sand in all the nooks and crannies. 
yet another process to do, but it's fine. I've already done it like 40, 50 times already just to get it sanded and primed to the point where it's at now. like folk art brand that is a very good budget paint for sure um, I wasn't confident in the ability to get it through the airbrush consistently um, budget paints their um, the consistency of their pigments is usually less meaning that there are gonna be larger and smaller little bits of, of uh, color floating around in the medium and that's just not super friendly to an airbrush airbrush wants very smooth substance going through it minutes away from time so I'm gonna spam my socials and get ready to raid someone cool um, in case you didn't know I've got fantasy adventure novels out on the Amazon they've got great reviews if you like fantasy adventure please check them out they're full of illustrations and maps that I've made as well got a YouTube channel full of tutorials and such if you're into art and crafting type stuff you should please check out Josh Foreman on the YouTube so yeah I will play us out by sanding 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 and hopefully next time we meet you'll see some beautifully painted Foremans thanks everyone for coming and hanging Hope you have a good rest of the day. Congrats again to Jimano and all his little Jimanlets.